Hello, hello, and welcome to KC Compliance. I am your host, Kudzai Chaka. Thank you for being with us. Apologies for the slight delay in starting this morning. You know that these technical computer things sometimes happen, but we managed to get it together and we're here. And I'd like to welcome my guest, my esteemed guest, who I'm so thrilled to have with me this afternoon, Viola Pamela Ndlovo. She is the head of compliance at a commercial bank in Zimbabwe, as well as being the chairperson of the compliance committee at the Bankers Association of Zimbabwe. And her career, as you saw from the profile that I circulated, is, you know, puts her squarely within the field of being a compliance expert. And she's here to talk to us today about, you know, a day in the life of a head of compliance. What does it actually mean? take, you know, what are the skills you need and, you know, what is it that keeps her awake at night? So we're going to have a stellar conversation about that. And I hope you're going to all get some great insights around the, the subject. So welcome, Viola, and thank you so much for agreeing to be my guest today. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kuzai, for inviting me. It is a pleasure to be here. And thanks to Casey Compliance for giving us this opportunity to share our views around the subject of compliance. I'm really honored, thank you. No, you're most welcome. And, and like I said, you, you, when I've, I've looked at your profile and we, you and I have had, you know, some time to chat offline and I just think that you'll be able to provide some really great insights for people to really understand, you know, at a high level, someone might be like, oh, I know what it is to be a head of compliance, but today they're really going to, you know, understand what that means. So without further ado and delay, um, let's jump straight into the conversation, you know, so you hold the position of a head of compliance. And I want to know, you know, in a particularly heavily regulated industry worldwide, not just in Zimbabwe, and that's in financial services, banking sector, you know, what are the sort of things that, you know, are your focus, top priorities at the moment? Um, and maybe even the kind of things that, you know, have you, you know, giving you sleepless nights um, in your role as head of compliance? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so definitely, I totally, you know, uh, can relate that uh, we are in an industry where it's highly regulated and number of regulatory developments come in on an you know, ongoing basis and there is pressure all the time to keep up with the changes. So for mm -hmm. me, uh, what I would say is the key priority for any compliance officer sitting in, in anywhere in the world is to keep abreast of those particular regulatory uh, changes because we are living in a world that is evolving. Banking itself is actually evolving. The, the old way of doing things have changed and the compliance approaches have also changed. So mm -hmm. sitting in as a compliance officer of any institution, you have that uh, uh, priority to keep it, uh, to, to just keep ensuring that you, 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 you know what is going on, you keep uh, abreast of any changes uh, that are coming through so that you're able to advise business. Basically, the role of being a compliance officer is an advisor to your board, mm -hmm. to management, to all staff on ways of how to, they can actually comply with their various compliance obligations. So if you are not able to then keep up with the various changes, it then creates uh, problems or you will then not be able to efficiently deliver in terms of your role. So I would say keeping abreast of regulatory change, it will be at, on the top of my priorities as a head of compliance. Then uh, secondly, uh, or you know even internationally, the management of financial crime and money laundering has become so topical. It's a global mm. topic especially in these times where we there is transformation in as far as currency is concerned i think uh internationally uh, we see various jurisdictions now speaking about issues of digital central bank digital currencies mm -hmm. etc we also see the issue of visual assets that is coming through so all those particular developments they do give money laundering risk a new face and it's an ever-evolving risk 
So as a compliance head, it's, a, it's one of the top priorities to say, look, okay, what have been the changes? What have been uh, the new developments? And what is the emerging risk that has got an impact and implication on the approach of how to manage financial crime and AML CFT in our, uh, I mean, uh, money laundering and terrorist financing risks within mm -hmm. our our various institutions. So for me, not only at institutional level, but at industry level as well, at yeah. national level as well as globally, it's a top, top priority for all compliance professionals where we just need to know and keep ourselves uh, you know, updated on the various uh, issues that are arising that affect what we do so that we're able to implement uh, commensurate uh, controls that are that that will then manage that uh, particular particular risk. So those yeah. are kind of like the two priorities. But uh, it, it wouldn't uh, be a complete conversation, Kuzi, if we then also do not talk about the various innovations and new technologies. Yeah. I mean that are coming through that are disrupting the way the old uh, way of looking at compliance processes and how mm -hmm. these are actually implemented on the ground. So as a compliance head, some of the, one of the key priorities is also to then just review the existing compliance processes and make sure they are streamlined and you are then able to align to the various changes that are coming through, especially the automation of the compliance mm -hmm. processes entirely most of our compliance processes previously have been quite manual um, yeah. <laughs> uh, when you look at different types of what uh, subjects under the compliance issue whether it's kyc onboarding uh, topics uh, issues etc mm -hmm. so uh, those uh, processes are now changing there is innovation that is coming through technologies that are that are being developed to actually yeah automate some of those particular processes so we when you're sitting in a role as a head of compliance is also then just to think how then it, compliance can still continue to achieve what it is that is expected to achieve in view of these technologies and can be are these technologies also then aligned to what the regulators would then expect even uh, if you are going to uh, adopt a certain process in a different man manner. So it's the automation really uh, that is happening or that also is now being prioritized because the issues of compliance are quite too many. And yeah. also you, 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 you have to, to efficiently allocate your resources and you constantly now think on how best you can streamline the processes, how then mm -hmm. can you automate them so that you, you can uh, actually achieve the goals that you set for yourself. And lastly, I think one of the priorities uh, for me from where I sit is the development of the team, uh, the, the, the team members, because yeah. uh, compliance is ever evolving. It comes with new challenges on a daily basis. So it's to then look at the team, uh, um, the team that you have and that you're working with and also try to just ensure that they are capacitated in as far as understanding the changes are concerned and our strategy in as far as implementation on the ground is concerned. So basically, I would say those are the priorities that um, I could think about at this particular point. Great. And just to pick on a few things that you've mentioned. So the first around, you know, you're going to have to keep up with regulatory developments, for example, and not only so, for example, you're working in a bank that's a, a local bank, but you still have to have a view of international regulatory developments because, you know, things like AML, counter-terrorist counter financing, um, yeah. you know, the developments in the cryptocurrency space and all of that, those are global issues that you also have to be aware of, regardless of the fact that maybe Maybe the footprint of the bank is, is international so you have to i mean national so you have to have that kind of view that's you know not just looking at your own little world but what else is is going on around around you that can potentially have an impact in your space um, in the future. And, you know, speaking of future, you touched on innovation, which is something I'm also very passionate about, that, you know, the world, you know, industry 4.0 and all of that is evolving, not only in terms of the compliance processes that we are experiencing, like you said, 
before we were using manual spreadsheets, you know, when, when I, I started, I'm sure yourself as well, very, yeah, yeah. very heavy on the spreadsheets. And now yeah. you've got, you know, automated processes that are handling a lot of that, but not only in our space, but the businesses that we support um, are also adopting innovation, robotics, machine learning, and, you know, artificial intelligence, all those type of things. So in order to effectively support them, we have to also have an understanding of those technologies and how they work. So, you know, it's about, to your point, having a broad view. It's not just about a compliance program and doing a risk yeah. assessment. There is so, yeah. it's about having that ability to look across all these different things and yeah. ultimately, in, how does it inform risk and how do you identify emerging risks so you know it's 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 not child's play to say the least <laughs> yes definitely and also i mean there are technologies now systems uh that you can actually purchase where they can inform you as and when new uh, changes are happening in the internationally you are able to identify the changes that have happened in America, in Europe, in Africa, in South Africa, in Ghana, everywhere, in Zimbabwe. Yeah. So the compliance has evolved more than just knowing what your regulator, your immediate regulator mm -hmm. uh, requires to you being challenged to know exactly what is happening throughout the world because th that has got implications on our country policies and at, yeah. at country policy, it's, it, it then informs also your work and in uh, the international standards, they also inform the kind of work uh, that we do. So they, the subject is growing, uh, or is, is growing on a, on a day by day basis yeah. and they need to keep up with those changes. But not only that, to your point, to understand what the changes mean and how they impact in the various uh, uh, you know, units in, within which we, 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 we monitor and we interact with. It will then create the need for, for, for a compliance uh, person to, 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 to actually you know, continuously seek knowledge of how to, 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 to share that particular information. Yeah, for very, very, very true. And I think one of the things you also mentioned was about skill developing your team, because yeah. those are the people that support you and help you do what you need to do, which leads me to my, my next question around around exactly that. So when you're looking at the people in your team and you're like, mm -hmm. okay, these are the people I need, what sort of skills are you looking for to make sure that you have the ability to effectively deliver on your mandate for your team? Okay. Yeah. So what I would say about team development, uh, maybe a general comment before I speak mm -hmm. on skills. I think if, even if we are in an era where uh, more, almost all our processes are being overtaken by technology, uh, technology requires that it's also commensurated with human intelligence. Yeah. And while we have got automated processes, we still need the skills and people who are able to eloquently apply themselves in as far as utilization of those um, of the technology is concerned. So for mm -hmm. me, what is uh, at the top of my you know needs in as far as skills are concerned is uh, is creativity. You know, you you want Absolutely. to work with 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 individuals that are quite uh, creative, that are able to look at. Uh, you know, the changes that are coming through or a certain assignment and quickly be able to know how best they will then be able to deliver that particular assi assignment, issues of agility, issues of making sure that they are strategic and innovative about a certain assignment. So for me, creativity is it's, it's a, it's, it's a big, uh, you know, skill that any one of our compliance officers would need to acquire. So mm -hmm. it, they, they, they say if you want to become a master in something, you have to actually do it with zeal and passion. So that's mm -hmm. where creativity then also uh, emerges and arises. So you need to be working with, uh, with a team that is uh, quite creative. And yeah. the second skill maybe I will speak to is communication skills, really. Uh, as a compliance officer, you are always seized with having to explain or unpack 
regulatory developments, uh, the mm -hmm. impact, and how that has to be implemented. So if you're not able to communicate clearly, you may probably fail to implement the various you know, deliverables that you have to implement. So communication mm -hmm. skills is one of the key skills that any compliance officer will need to have. So uh, that I think those are the two uh, key skills that I can think about. But there are so many other skills uh, mm -hmm. connected to, 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 to creativity. You, you need uh, compliance officers that become subject matter expertise someone who is able to explain and understand the spirit and the letter of any regulation or policy that then comes through the interpretation of it and how it actually applies in as far as our work is concerned. So uh, the encouragement is to have to become a subject matter expertise in any area that you are, especially also in compliance, so that yeah. you are able to deliver uh, the, 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 the various obligations or the expectations that uh, uh, your stakeholders may have. You also need to understand the business. Compliance Absolutely. is, you, when we look at compliance, we're not just looking at it as if you are policing others. It's, actually, <laughs> it's, it's a strategic role. And because that is it's strategic, you have to understand the business for you then to be able to understand how regulations or compliance matters have an impact on the business itself. So if you don't have, uh, you know, a skill to understand the business, to analyze strategy and how you can then contribute to the overall strategy of an institution, you, uh, you, you then may miss the mark because it's very, very important for a compliance officer to then be able to understand the business so that they're able to provide their advisory role. Then uh, stakeholder engagement as well. You work with people. I was speaking about communication. You have to develop the skills of stakeholder engagement, how mm. to approach, what exactly to say, and also learning the art of how to you know, accept or feedback once you have had that particular engagement. So from a skills perspective, there are so many other uh, skills from an operational perspective, somebody who's able to conduct risk assessments and you know analytical skills, et cetera, so that we are able to, you are able to advise or to come up with resolutions that can advise, can advise business. So those are some of the, um, uh, skills that I, 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 I thought about uh, critical thinking, you know, yeah. just applying, applying yourself, thinking outside the box, really, so that you are able to give yourself fully and to 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 your stakeholders' expectation. And I love that you mentioned the soft skills um, first before you mentioned like technical things like you must be able to do a risk assessment and stuff because sometimes people get very focused on uh, I need to learn the technical aspects and the soft skills get very much neglected in the, in the process. But as much as you can be a technical expert, if you can't communicate those technicalities to the people who need to implement them on the ground. It's kind of like a, okay, so what are we doing here kind of situation, you know? You need to yeah. be able to speak to people, explain it to them in a way they understand and can receive and implement it as opposed yeah. to just, you know, okay, I've come, this is what the regulation says and, you know, figure it out on your own. You know, it's about working with them. So, you know, those yeah. are all great um skills that you mentioned i mean as for stakeholder engagement i mean as, as as much as you can be in in compliance one thing we don't do is the you know work in a silo you don't just sit oh, yeah. in your little office and, and 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 you know do do work and go home at the end of the day everything yeah, yeah. that we need to implement needs other people and for yeah. you to get them to do that work and to buy into what you want to do and to be able to influence them you definitely need to have the skill of you know stakeholder management and engagement and so all of these skills kind of work together like you're saying even the creativity yeah. you know you can't yeah. just be presented with a problem and be mm -hmm. like oh i don't know or this is the only answer i can think of you need to be yeah. able to think 
laterally okay. yeah. and creatively about yeah. different solutions. So, you know, I think that's that's excellent in terms of the 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 the, the skills that you've like explained to people. Oh yeah. So, so it's 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 a lot. Everything. Yeah. Yes, it's 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 it, you know it's a it's a whole list of the mm. skills we were speaking about technology. You want somebody who's able to understand. So it's not enough to say, okay, I've got a background maybe in banking and or maybe I've got a background in legal and you end there. It's very critical now that you also upskill yourself to understand other areas especially from understanding technology because if we're going to use autom if we're going to automate our processes you have to be able to understand and eloquently articulate what it means interpretation of the results etc there's also issue of being detail oriented there is a lot of reading that happens yes. in the compliance space. So you have to pay attention to detail. So you have to be a detail oriented person. It's a skill that really is quite important as we mm -hmm. deliver you know, our work so that we're able to bring our A game in any area that we are requested to give our advice or our inputs. Absolutely. And I think in terms of on your point on being detail oriented, you know, yeah. I always try to also stress that as much as you need, you don't have to know the answer to every single question in the moment, but you need yeah. to know where to find the answers to the question and be able yeah. to deliver reliable advice to the businesses that you're supporting. Because if you're not good on the detail, you know, the implications of missing that one important provision or something mm -hmm. can be quite quite serious so you know detail orientation is very in, in, important in that respect because the implications you know a whole project can go in this direction because you said x y and z only to go back and maybe reread something and be like oh my goodness i misinterpreted or i didn't pick up this thing and now yeah. the project was supposed to go in that direction so exactly. <laughs> yeah so so de definitely point. so it, it it's actually a big challenge i i talked about being well read all the time um, so yeah. that you are able to understand and also it's not that you are an uh, expert in, in all subjects that comes through regulations mm -hmm. it's okay to seek clarity it's also okay to engage you know the, the the experts in the area so that they can you can both collaborate and assist each other to unpack a certain regulatory uh, development so that you 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 then do not mislead the business yes. because when you are a compliance officer people have the trust that we have got an advisor you are then you are the expert in the area so you are able mm -hmm. to eloquently speak to the issues that can come come up i'll give you an example of tax related matters tax related uh, compliance issues are quite technical yeah. you may need the, you know the accountants those that have done tax law or that mm -hmm. actually understands the implication and implementation of those particular issues so as a compliance person it's good to have interpersonal skills where you are able to collaborate with others where mm -hmm. you're not clear you also then seek to understand because we always work it's a team effort it's not an individual issue and you are mm -hmm. not always expected to say um, a certain area you can even seek clarity engagement with the regulator mm -hmm. be, be, be open to seek knowledge so that you're able to explain and give your stakeholders the very best than to assume knowledge that you don't have and then mislead in terms of the advice that you give. No, absolutely. I agree 100%. I mean, I can't tell you how many times in my own experience I've had to go and sit at someone's desk and be like, listen, can you just explain this to me? Or is this is how I'm understanding it? What are your thoughts? Like you said, it's a collaborative thing. It's not about being the most, the smartest person in the room. I never have to ask a question. It's about getting to the right answer. And if you yeah. need to speak to people to get that answer and get the right position and correct understanding, then that's what you have to do. But it takes a... 
it takes a, 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 a type of person who knows that, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm willing to not, to look like I don't know, for lack of a better way, in order yeah. to have a, a deeper understanding of, of, of an area. So, yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's very critical. And, you know, it's not, although we talk about you need to have these skills, you know, skills can be developed. You know, if someone discovers that, you know what, I'm not particularly strong on this area, they can work on those skills. So in as much as we're saying to be a compliance professional and ultimately to to lead a compliance department, you need certain skills. You yeah. know, the person I think I, I want to just highlight that a person doesn't need to feel like, oh, okay, so I'm I'm not good at communication, so I can never yeah. do this job. You know, it's mm -hmm. stuff that you can work on as long yeah. as you're committed to to achieving certain levels. But you know, you will have to work on it if it's something that an area that you feel like you is an area for development, essentially. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, for sure. Um so yeah. As much as we have skills and you can do this job and, you know, th these are the requirements and things that you're looking at, you know, there's no job that comes without challenges on, on this planet. <laughs> as yeah, much yeah. as maybe an outsider might look and be like, oh, my God, Viola's killing it. You know, everything has got challenges from time oh, to yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. So what are the, some of the challenges that you faced in either the lead up to the role, within the role, um, and what are the lessons that you've learned as, you know, sitting in this position now as, as a head of compliance? All right. Uh, so I've, I've quite a couple, a list of the challenges. <laughs> oh, yeah, that we face. But maybe one that is worth us discussing and uh, just unpacking is the fact that uh, sometimes you face challenges of dealing with factors that are, totally outside of your control mm -hmm. you know um for example uh when we're talking about the money laundering subject or the financial crime issue like i indicated mm -hmm. it's a global topic and most of the times uh the the issues that may arise uh at, that are critical for implementation but they may be factors that are there around it that you you may you 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 are not able to deal with because they're outside of your control if mm -hmm. there are institution issues we can deal with those because if it's a policy to put in place i'm sure all institutions prioritize to get skilled people to look at those issues but when you look at things like financial crime for example you may be dealing with a percep perception risk uh, I, 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 I speak this because we in banking, we are involved in international trades and we have to do, uh, you know, transactions with other institutions mm. out, um, um, uh, internationally, your correspondent banking relationships, etc. So mm. when certain things are reviewed or assessed from a third party perspective, you may not have control over that because you're dealing yeah. with factors pretty much that are outside your control. And certain times you face the risk where there is a perception, whether it's an institution perception, it's a country perception that can then have some third party concluding that, oh, you are a high risk entity or you are a high risk nation and we may not be able to do business with you then it then results in issues of this risking and and, and so on so th those are some of the challenges uh, when i think about compliance in that in so many times you are dealing with factors that are outside of your control but the ability now to say okay this is outside my control but how can i do what is it that within my control i'm able to do it, it, just working towards making the whole situation uh, better. Obviously, you may not have total control, but there's a certain degree of what you can then do uh, as an institution or as a nation to, or as, a, as an industry body to just work towards trying to address some of those particular factors that may be outside your control. So some of those, that, that's one of the key uh, challenges that we face in this particular industry where we deal with issues of compliance. Then the second issue we have already spoken about, the issue of engagement, whereby uh, we talked about the skill to say somebody has to have in the skills to engage. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not all the time that when you conduct engagement, uh, you're going to receive uh, positive feedback. 
you know, other engagements, the result in something that you have not been ex expecting at mm -hmm. all. So they sometimes there is a downturn, but a, a, all, any downturn leads to an opportunity of an upturn. So it's then the ability to look and interrogate the reasons why a certain engagement has failed whether at regulatory level, at a board level, at industry level, at country level, when you're dealing with compliance related matters, mm -hmm. and then just learning from it to say, what are the lessons that I can draw from the failures of this particular in engagement? And what is it that I can do in future to actually change, to, 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 to change uh, whatever lessons that you, um, mistakes that you may have noted? So that is another challenge that we face yeah. as comp compliance professionals. But there are so many other, uh, all again, going back Kuzi, to your first point, embedding regulatory change. Sometimes it's not as easy as it seems. You know, sometimes the regulatory developments that come, they may be too costly. They may need a whole team, a whole project itself, they come with immediate implementation deadlines, uh, but in reality and on the ground, they may actually not, it may not be feasible for you to immediately, you know, implement. So as a compliance officer with sitting in any institution, those are some of the challenges that uh, we face and that we may actually then need to tackle. Keeping up with the regulatory change itself. I Like I indicated, you could invest in systems which can, you know, give you information on, uh, you know, as and when the regulatory uh, changes are happening. But again, there is issue of cost. So the budgets from a compliance perspective, do we have the sufficient resources to actually support the volume and the, the, the rate at which these changes are happening? So in certain circumstances, you can only do so much, but again, you have to balance uh, the need for you to know what is happening in an ongoing basis and also the budget and the allocation of resources uh, that, you, that, that you may have. I think we were speaking about digitization, automation. So the challenges around data protection, when you, live, when you look at the, at, at the legal framework itself, you want to then analyze, uh, do we have the legal framework that then really supports the new way of doing things uh, for example we have resorted to 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 to, to e-signatures and so on uh, legally or what does it mean what is the impact uh, issue of evidencing in future should a, a challenge arise so there's so many challenges uh, that i can think of in our in our profession that we can speak to and that we may need to be continuously interrogating as we have these particular uh, conversations. Then when we speak about the lessons learned, um, again, it's a, a topical issue, Kuzi, whereby there's so many lessons that we have learned from what it is that it means to be a compliance officer in an institution, uh, in a banking institution or in any institution. Uh, I'm sure compliance is almost similar in almost all industries, uh, across all industries. There's the issue of adapt uh, adaptability. You need to be adaptable to change. You have to embrace the inevitable change that, you know, comes through. Because at times uh, you, 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 you are left with no choice, but you just need to be creative and find a way of how best you can look at those particular issues. And I also then spoke about continuously developing skills. Most of the things that are emerging that I was speaking to is not something that we have learned in school or in the varsities. So it's not in any textbook. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in any textbook. So you have to always keep yourself well read and develop your skills so that you align to the various developments that are happening and you keep yourself, you know, knowledgeable of the, what we are going through. So we speak of the new normal. No one knew about what the new normal meant. And probably there was no book that was, you know, ever wrote uh, before the pandemic 
uh, change. But the, the pandemic brought so much disruption, changed the way we view things. We started thinking about, okay, do we have working from home policies, for example, remote working policies? What does a remote working policy look like? What are the key elements, etc.? So there is so much that we have learned from the challenges, I mean, that we have gone through, especially during this pandemic, as well as when the evolution of, of banking is actually, you know, happening. So there are definitely a number of learning points and key deliverables that you can draw, especially when you're in a leadership role. Uh, mm -hmm. You need to read the current and the future environment and yeah. not only that, but you also need to take action. If you know and understand the current environment, what you envisage for the future, what is it that you can do today to make sure that you are well prepared for any disruption that can actually mm -hmm. come in the in the future? You always need to set a vision and a direction for mm -hmm. any work that you are doing especially when you are in this particular role what is it that you need to actually achieve and how are you actually going to do it and you set a step-by-step -step plan but the plan should is always evolving because it has Absolutely. to be aligned with the changes so your plan that you do maybe this particular quarter or today may definitely be different from what the the, the actions that you may need to take tomorrow so it you have to, to you this uh, is industry keeps us on our toes so that we are able to continuously you know plan and continuously scan the environment and see how that is actually going to to to, to affect you then you, yeah. you, you definitely always need to be results you know oriented and push hard so that you then achieve uh, your, your 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 goals so there is a lot that we have learned and uh, that you can also learn and the deliverables from a leadership perspective that you can then apply so that you are able to eloquently um put yourself out there especially when you are uh trying we are when you're dealing with this role yeah i'm just going to touch on a couple of things that you mentioned all is very meaty good stuff and all of that but i just want to touch on the two things so the first is about um the point you raised about stakeholder engagement that sometimes despite your best efforts and you know you putting your best foot forward and sometimes maybe you've had a bad day and not necessarily put your best foot forward you know you can have an engagement with the stakeholder like you said that just went goes like this you know yeah. and you are not ready you are not ready for how how that went um yeah. and you know i i've, I've had a, such an experience um, in my in my career that you know it, it, at the time you are actually quite taken aback but to yeah. your point you know, you have to have the capacity to not only take the feedback and acknowledge. Let's say, if if you were if you played a role in, you know, they were um, justified in how they reacted to a certain extent. Then you have to also be able to take that in and say, okay, this is where I made a mistake, or this is where maybe I didn't communicate clearly, whatever the issue is. And then at the same time, have the skills to turn that relationship around. It's yeah. not about, okay, so I fought with Mr. So-and-so or Mr. So-and-so said he wasn't help, happy with X, Y, Z in terms of the team performance or how it impacted his business area, for example. And then yeah. from then on, you're now enemies for life. <laughs> you yeah. actually have to invest in saying, okay, I acknowledge my role in this situation. And he was not happy justifiably. And sometimes... Mm -hmm. This we're, we're, we're being honest in this conversation. Sometimes mm -hmm. someone put, potentially... Um, reacted to something badly and they were in the wrong but that's just yeah. how the conversation went so yeah. even in that circumstance you have to be the bigger person because like you said ultimately we are supposed to work as a team between compliance yeah. and the business to produce yeah. a certain outcome whether yeah. it's profit business whatever it is in yeah. a risk managed way and yeah. it's, it's 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 not to your benefit or the other person's benefit to have an acrimonious relationship and that's yeah. probably one of the hardest lessons i had to learn at some point as well that okay <laughs> i can't be mad at this person i have to work with them so yeah. i need to fix this relationship so it's really about making sure that you're taking the time that when a when a stakeholder engagement goes wrong you have to fix it, you know, and yes. unfortunately you might be the one who always has to be the bigger person, but it works for you ultimately in, in the long run. 
Yes. So I, 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 I thought, I, yeah, it's it's quite you know like when I look at myself now, uh, even mm -hmm. when I started my career and to where I am, you, you can actually see growth in as yeah. far as you know personally to say when you look at yourself, uh, the way you 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 articulate certain issues or you manage conflict. It's yeah. different from when you are starting and when you then grow in the various roles and when you're given the various responsibilities. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you are not dealing with, like I, should, like I indicated, sometimes the engagement is at regulator level, yes. you know, whereby you are not, maybe you are in a position of, you obviously the, the, the regulator mostly has got a, has got some sort of um, power in yeah. making the power the dynamic is different the, yeah is the, the pine power dynamic is different how do you you know uh, manage that particular situation when you are now engaging so you you learn quite a lot uh, in when you continuously engage at different levels whether at team level you know mm -hmm. uh, at um, regulator level or at industry level, because at the end of the day, there is need for collaboration in everything you do. We do not work in silos, and you will never, you will not be able to win if you work in in in, a, in silo. You won't be able to then achieve yeah. your different goals. So, yeah, stakeholder engagement is quite a big and a topical issue when we speak about compliance. No, for sure, and it segues me perfectly into the next question, which is still around, you know, stakeholders, you know, um, and I've mentioned, you know, I've had difficult stakeholders and, you know, thank you. Thank goodness. You know, I was able to turn those relationships around, but um, how do you deal with it? Or how do you actually manage it from a you know practical perspective when you like have a stakeholder who's just like, you know what, Fahela, I hear what you're saying. I know the regular said, the regulator said this needs to be done, but I, my system works perfectly. This is the legacy system that we're operating or whatever the issue is. And we can only do it next year, even though the deadline is next month, you know, I, <laughs> you know, just, or just a challenging situation with the, with the, with the, what are the practical steps that you've taken to kind of manage that and, you know, make sure that what needs to get done get, gets done. Okay. So I've got two, um, you know, points that came to my mind when you were, you know, describing the question. Um, so for me, I think how I've dealt with in the past is to try and seek to understand where the misunderstanding is emanating from. So mm -hmm. you, whether it's a disagreement, it's a, you know, it's a conflict, and you know, when you're failing to be on the same page, especially when it comes to deadlines and so on, it is important in our line of work to also be open to other people's views. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, there are certain deadlines that we are dealing with at certain points. It has to be done at times. We may not have an option. But like I indicated, we have to develop engagement skills. Again, I'll speak to the issue of engagement. It mm -hmm. can be engagement to say you, 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 you review the, the requirement or the obligation that is required to be done by a certain specific timeline. You engage maybe the champion that is championing that particular issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will probably are not on the same page. And you need to understand why they are failing to be on the same page to say there is a certain regulatory return that we have to submit by such a time. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we have failed? So, so many times the reasons may be justifiable, for example, lack of adequate resources from the other party who's mm -hmm. championing. You are sitting in compliance, you're not involved, you're just, you know, a community, you're transmitting. <laughs> you're, just, you're just sending emails saying, where's my report? <laughs> that's all you're doing. But you may um, lack understanding of the realities of the steps that a certain champion has to take to implement the requests Absolutely. that is at hand. So how that has helped is for, for help me is to seek to understand the challenges that the implementer is going through. And if there anything that we can do to rectify whether collaborate, assist, 
get additional resources so that we can then just meet our deadline or if it's way out of our control like i said dealing with things that are beyond what you can actually do there's also under room for regulatory engagement Absolutely. in a respect respectful manner engaging the other party to say uh we 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 note uh, the request, uh, and this may be our situation. The, we have got these one, two, three challenges, and then you probably request for an extension. But it should not always be, you know, the default or making it a habit. You don't mm -hmm. want to develop an, an, a, a situation whereby when people are engaging with Kudzai, they know, oh, each time you, you, you get to <laughs> have Kudzai on the call, she's asking, she's for, asking for an extension. Yeah. Yes. It should be a once in a, you know, event if it calls for that. But you have yeah. to do everything you can within your powers to manage whatever challenge that you may be facing at institution level. So again, yeah. to seeking to understand what the challenges are, how they can be re rectified, and also you become part of the solutions, mm. for, of the solution, not just to sit in your comfortably in your office and you know just giving instruction. There is need to build relationships to couch those particular uh, you know stakeholder relationships so that you are able to deliver and achieve your goals. And they, it calls for critical thinking as well in, in such situations where you follow the logic of the argument. Sometimes if you have to defend your point of view, you have to come out and actually defend your point of view at times and mm -hmm. give in the facts. Because again, remember, as a compliance officer, you are an advisor. So there are certain circumstances that calls for you to be then be able to also give the facts and also be able to eloquently uh, explain them so that you mm -hmm. then give information or share the knowledge to that other stakeholder that may not be on the same page with you. I'm not saying we are always right, but there are certain things that are factual and that are obvious that you may need. You, you I, I talked about being an, a, a subject matter expert. Mm -hmm. So obviously, because you're the one that understands the subject more than your other counterpart, the other uh, party or the other stakeholder. So you have to be patient as well to explain where you're coming from, why it's important that it has to be done if you're not on the same page so that you are then able to, 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 to move forward. And again, if you have tried to do the engagements, being part of the solution, we always have room for escalation where we mm -hmm. probably then reach a deadlock whereby you can then escalate to the next level to then probably get guidance and assist in as far as unpacking or dealing with a certain issue. No, for sure. And I, I love those points because especially when you're talking about, you know, you have to understand the root cause of a, a, a non-compliance issue or, you know, delays or whatever is taking place because that's the only way it can be resolved. And I think the impact of that as well in terms of your relationship with your stakeholder is that they then also realize that listen, Viola is not just sitting in her office um, throwing down commands at us. She's actually willing <laughs> to come down and, <laughs> and work with us and find a solution that, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's easy to, to say this must be done. But yeah. to put yourself forward and say, I want to be part of the solution or how can we make it work in a way that actually fits for the business, but meets mm -hmm. compliance requirements. You know, it's yeah. like you're saying that whole collaboration situation. And then also when you go to the regulator again in those exceptional circumstances, it also shows the business that, listen, she's also willing to be our champion. We've tried yeah. to figure it out. We've yeah. tried to, to work on it and find a solution and there's this challenge. She's going to be our champion in this arena and try to get us an extension. And mm -hmm. to your point, you also don't want that to be something where now everyone is just like, just get an extension, just get yeah. an extension. And they aren't actually really trying to yeah. make it work. And that's where you kind of have to also have you know the, the 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 personality, I guess, to be able to be like, okay, guys, 
let's be serious. Let's focus. I don't think we're doing our best to meet this. I'm not just going to be getting you a, an extension left, right, and center because you can't be bothered. So it's, yeah. it's, it's that balancing act that these are the sort of, and why I'm loving this conversation is that these are the nuances that you deal with um, yeah, yeah. As, a head of, as a head of compliance, right? That, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's stuff you learn in the role you develop. You mentioned growth earlier on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's important why people, you know, you can't graduate from varsity and get your law degree and become a head of compliance there's a, there's a certain amount of growth and and, yeah. and and experience that that is required along the way and all those just like you do grade one grade two grade three grade four yeah yeah you know, you need to kind yeah. of go through all the steps so that you have those skills and the abilities to kind of finesse in those different situations and arenas so that you can be successful. Otherwise, if you jump the gun too soon, you know, yeah. you're almost setting yourself up for failure because all those yeah. little things that you need to be able to manage and negotiate and influence, you know, as opposed to just saying, this is how you write a policy, mm. you know, you might not necessarily have the skills for that. So this is I'm, I'm, I'm glad you've mentioned all those things because I think it's going to be very illuminating, you know, yeah. for, for people, especially, you know, sometimes I have conversations and I don't know if you do yourself with, let's say, you know, younger people in the profession, like um, oh, I'm oh, myself oh. being a head of compliance in three years. And I'm like, I don't want to burst your bubble, but <laughs> there's a lot more to it than, you know, just working for two years and now you want to jump in via head of compliance. Oh, definitely. There's a lot of growth. And yeah. it's also the ability to say when you fall, you, how you pick yourself up. Absolutely. There's going to be obstacles throughout the way and you are just supposed to, you know, continuously remember and remind yourself that you need to, to adopt a growth mentality and a mm -hmm. positive attitude. Always be optimistic about the future. Things do not always remain the, the, the way they are. You can you certainly face, face challenges. Just like you face challenges, not only at work, even mm -hmm. at home, in our various, uh, you know, um, at country level. Yeah. at uh, industry level at, at any given you know in our different so in society etc yeah so it's your ability now to say how do you pick yourself up and move forward and what is your ultimate goal so that you mm -hmm. do not then lose track of what it is that you want to achieve so no yeah sure. growth mentality keeping up with a positive attitude is what will then help you to grow and move forward if in, in, in your career as a compliance officer. Yeah. I mean, I feel yeah. like you've already given like so much amazing, great, thoughtful advice, but I will ask the question anyway. <laughs> when we're talking about, you know, people are looking at you and, you know, a lot of people saw your profile and they're like, wow, they're so impressed with everything that you've achieved, academics, professionally, and all of that. Um, what advice would you give to someone who's saying, you know what, I, I, I see, I'm inspired and I see myself being where you are, who you are in at some point in my career? All right. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, what I can say and the advice I can give to the young people, anyone who's, uh, you know, uh, looking at compliance and want to make it their career path is that I can confirm to them that compliance is quite exciting. It's always new and it's always evolving. It keeps us on our toes at any given time. You can never say, oh, uh, I've been doing this over and over again because at any given time you have to do fresh things. So seek to acquire knowledge and be well read and be well researched. Stay relevant. Whenever you are given an assignment, you just have to do it 200%. Every opportunity that you have been given, whether you are a very, very junior person you have to tackle it with all excellency and show that that you know you can do this so for me what helped me is just the passion that i had when i then was starting also looking up to my principles you know seeking to understand what it is that i may need to do to get to where they are and also applying myself totally 
100% in every little assignment. Even if it's minute taking, you are just, you know, um, attending a meeting and you're just taking minutes. Do it to the best of your ability. And in all fairness, that is what then will take you far in as far as achieving or uh, your, your, your career objectives. So yes, compliance is quite exciting and it will be good to have more people joining the profession and the industry so that we can also have so many young energetic people that are skilled, knowledgeable in the area. But it's not certain things that you can learn sometimes in university but it's things that you you can always uh, you know develop um sorry about that <laughs> so um <laughs> these things happen despite our best efforts um i know <laughs> I mean, the and and I, I couldn't agree more with the um, advice that you've that you've given because you know especially that point about even the littlest thing along the way which might seem like a menial task like a task that why am I give, being given this you know kind of situation I went to school you know all those kind of things do it with yeah. excellence even yeah. the most simple thing that you you might not be passionate about. Because my personal belief is that all of those things add up to your experience. All of those things contribute. So you can't then, you know, just do some of these things, you know, half-heartedly and then the rest of the things you're kind of, you know, doing with, um, okay, this is my level and now I'm going to be excellent. If you're excellent, yeah. then you're excellent in all things. And those are the type of things that will let you be um, in your position Um in the in the in the future you know just that commitment to excellence on an ongoing basis and i know i'm looking at the clock and i see the time is moving but i do want to make sure that if anyone is in the message i see violet is is, is, is having a laugh that my son <laughs> my son decided to to make an appearance you know these things happen <laughs> um uh, but if there way to yeah yeah uh, yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, quite he, 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 hilarious. At, you know, when we are almost wrapping up the conversation. It, I it thought really I had <laughs> made it. I thought I had made it through without his uh, making an working. appearance. Oh, yeah, working <laughs> from home. <laughs> working from, like you say, we have to be agile and adaptable, you know, and keep it moving. Um, exactly. If I get rattled by his appearance, you know, what do you, what do you do? But um, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to open the, the the chats. I've seen a lot of comments comments coming through. Um, but if anyone has maybe a specific question they would like Viola to to answer, then feel free to also pop that into the chat. Um, and I'll be happy to to share it with Viola. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just one of those things where I'm I'm so grateful for this conversation and yeah. for for being able to interact in this level because you know it's it's a learning experience and you know as much as you know I've had a career in compliance and maybe the people who are on the chat and who will watch this later um, have also got some sort of career. There's value in knowledge sharing. There's value yeah, yeah. in experience sharing and there's some unique experiences that you have that I can be like, oh, okay, I can learn for that and apply that in my own situation. And that is what this platform is, is, is all about. It's really about sharing um, information, sharing knowledge and making it more of a, uh, more ex people like yourself accessible yeah. to people who potentially might not, you know, they don't work with you. They live in South Africa, they live in Nigeria, you know, yeah. but you know, the, the wealth of knowledge and experience that you have is very valuable to share with the broader community. Um, I don't see any question popping in to the chat. So I think maybe we've answered all the questions um, yeah. in terms of the, the context of our, our conversation. So I think on, on that note, unless there's anything else that you've suddenly thought of and have a gem that you want to drop last minute? <laughs> no, uh, nothing, but uh, just to thank you for this conversation. I mean, it's quite you know enlightening. Uh, we able to share notes and let's keep the conversation open so that we're able to also learn from where you are in the jurisdiction that you are based so that we, we can then impact the various developments that are happening that side. We can also then information sharing in as far as how to enhance 
our approaches in monitoring or managing compliance compliance is concerned but otherwise yeah. thank you so much and thank you to the kc compliance team for facilitating and ensuring that uh, this conversation goes thank you Awesome. And we do have a question um, from Violet. Um, she says, what advice would you give to young girls who would like to be industry titans like you in any industry, not just banking or compliance? Okay, yeah. So my advice uh, remains the same. Do not take for granted any assignment, any position that you hold currently. Like you said, uh, Kudzi, you do not work up you are a bank CEO or, or you don't wake up, you are a president or any other position that anyone can hold in an in industry. You have to take the steps. It's necessary for you to go through the whole process. It's actually a journey. And let's embrace every stage at which we are. It's important. You learn to look back and say, wow, I didn't know that when I was going through that particular point, uh, this was actually preparing me for my next stage level. So every stage in a career path is very, very important. From as far as you are joining an institution, you are at clerical level to the highest level. That's how we grow. So for me, my advice is let's embrace every single assignment that we are given and let's respect the process and let's also intelligently execute. Don't mm -hmm. take things for granted. If you need to do a bit of research and reading for you to actually give the best, do that and do not take anything for granted. So that's what I would, I would say. Yeah. And in terms of advice that I would give, um, I'm particularly passionate about um, women and girl empowerment, <laughs> which is why I want to share my two cents. But, yeah. you know, when you're in a, when you find yourself in a particular space, you, you have worked your way to being in that space. So yeah. own your space in that room. You deserve to be there. Don't let anyone make you feel less than because you're female. And sometimes yeah. as women, especially um, in our in our cult in certain cultures, you know, we are taught to be more softer spoken and don't look people in the eye. And yeah. personally, it's something that I've had to train myself um, out of. Because unfortunately, in the corporate world, that that's something that's just a requirement. So own your own your voice on the spaces that you're in because you deserve to be there and don't yeah. be apologetic about being there. Make your presence felt. It doesn't mean you have to be screaming in the room, but yeah. let your voice be heard and you know, believe that you deserve to be there as much as anybody else in the room is there. So that, that would be the, the advice. And do that at every level as you go up um, and you'll be fine. So that's the, so my two cents. And yeah, we have yeah. a, we have another question. Violet is on a roll, so we'll 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 be sure to make sure to get answers. Says um, you're at the pinnacle of your compliance career. What's next for you? <laughs> That's a good <laughs> question, uh, Violet. Uh, for me, where I am uh, is just you know the beginning. Compliance, when you look at it, it's very broad. It's broader than. Um, uh, you know, what most people may, may seem to know, but there is a lot. Uh, there is also space. You can then specialize. You may know broadly all the subject matters, but you may then become a financial crime expert or subject, you know, mm -hmm. expert in that particular area. And then you can actually grow in that role you know, focusing only on, on, on that, the issues of conduct, risk, governance, and ethics, a lot of regulatory compliance, you know, the, so there is a lot. So for me, uh, I, this is just the beginning. Uh, there is a, so much that needs to be done and um, we're just starting. So yeah. yeah, there is so much that you, you can do and develop within the compliance space. Like I indicated, you know, th new things are coming through. We spoke about data analytics, machine learning, a artificial intelligence, all those things we still need to master to know 
who knows in future you just may need to be focusing on 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 that and it's just a drop in the ocean of the various compliance topics that you know you have to deal with so that would be my my my, my response to that question yeah and i think on that note um we can you know call the the conversation to a close and i'd like to say that i don't believe that you're at the pinnacle just yet yeah. i think yeah. the pinnacle is still a, a goal that needs to be to be reached and when you get there you set another goal and you the keep goal. on moving so yeah. i'm looking forward to watching the space and seeing where you know to the height the heights that you you reach within this profession and beyond because yeah. that's the beautiful thing about compliance right it's such a multifaceted pr profession you can yeah. go in many directions within it and it can yeah. also allow you to go in directions outside of it right. you know yeah. it's all about that that creative thinking and seeing whatever opportunities come your way. So I'm yeah. very excited to see where your journey takes you. And I hope you remain a friend of Compliance Conversations. Um, I'll, be call, I'll be calling on you, you know, in a few <laughs> years time to talk about yeah. whatever it is you're doing in the future. Um, I should, yeah. I'm sure it will be great things. So I'd just oh, like yeah. to say thank you so much for being my guest and for joining me. Thank you for everyone who was part of this conversation and contributed and asked questions. That's fantastic. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and support what we are doing, which is to share information and knowledge around our profession um, and share it with a friend as well so that they can also benefit from the channel. So um, on that note, thank you so much to everybody who joined and stay tuned to Compliance Conversations. We have another conversation coming up soon more great speakers coming up in 2022 and beyond. So subscribe and be a part of our family. But thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye.